Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and today we're going to look at a more advanced way of controlling a cooling fan using a PWM signal or pulse width modulation. Now the heart of this circuit is a triple five timer, and it's set to produce a square wave. Now, if we change the voltage here at the control voltage pin of pin five of the triple five timer, we can change the duty cycle of the square wave signal on the output. And the duty cycle is the difference between when it goes high and then goes low. So it's the distance between the high pulse versus the distance between the low pulse. Uh, that gap in between. And that's its duty cycle. Now the thing with a triple five timer is you cannot go from zero duty cycle to 100%. You can only go from 50% to close to 100%. But for the purposes of controlling a fan, um, it's perfectly adequate. We also have an op amp here, an NE5534 in this case, which controls pin 5 of the 555 timer. And the way this works is using an NTC like in the previous version. If both of these pins voltages is the same, well the comparator will be in a low state. As soon as the voltage on pin 3 becomes higher than the voltage on pin 2, well then this should start to swing high. And that's most of the desired effect we want. And then pin 3 of the triple 5 timer will then drive a output driver to the fan, which is not shown at the moment. However, I'm going to build and test this backwards. And what I mean is, I'm going to build up the triple 5 timer circuit first. And I'm going to vary the voltage at pin 5 just using a pop. And we'll look at what the output is doing. Then I'll come up with a way of driving the fan at the output. And then finally I'll build the comparator circuit and uh, with the NTC. And see if it operates as well we want it to. As soon as this gets hot enough, the fan turns on. So... Let's get going. And a short time later, I've got the triple five timer configured as a square wave oscillator. Ignore everything else on the board. It's not actually relevant at this point in time. And I'm scoping the output of pin three via that 1K resistor. And that large capacitor on the right there is a one microfarad 100 volt cap. I didn't have um, anything smaller than that. I have a 10K variable potentiometer there. And uh, the clockwise portion is connected to the positive rail. The counterclockwise pin is connected to the ground, and the wiper is connected to pin 5. Power supply is set to 12 volts. I've got the scope turned on, so I'll just turn the load on. And as we can see, we do actually have a signal there, albeit it's going off the screen. But this is exactly what pulse width modulation looks like. We can see with the... Um, rising peaks, the distance between the uh, bit where it then slams back down to zero is a lot shorter than the, the dead intervals. So if I vary the pot, we can see that it changes. And currently the frequency is around about a kilohertz. And at the top end, which is going to be full speed, I'm not sure what frequency that is, because I can't even read it. So, yeah, it goes from around about just over a kilohertz down to uh, about 100 hertz or something. So, well, we know that the pulse width modulation is varying, so now we need to come up with a driver to drive the fan from the output of that 
triple five timer. And I'm thinking about just using a BJT or a bipolar junction transistor. You could just as easily use a MOSFET, but for the frequencies we're working at, um, which are fairly low, the switching speed of the transistor is not really relevant. So over here is my solution to the output driver. I've just got a BD139 transistor, a back EMF diode that's hiding there between the collector and the positive rail, and the fans connected across the diode. And there's another set of leads connected across the diode which goes to a multimeter to measure the output voltage. And there is the schematic representation of it, so you can see what's going on. The output via that 1K resistor from pin 3 of the 555 timer goes to the base of the transistor. The emitter goes to ground, and the collector is basically in between the positive rail and the motor. I've got that Technic span there connected to the uh, transistor, so if I apply the power, uh, I will vary the control. And it is spinning, but it's got that rather annoying squeal in the background. That's actually the frequency of the oscillator um, switching noise on the output going into the fans, coils, and the coils are acting like well, a voice call and a speaker, and hence the sound. So what we need to do is we need to add a capacitor, well, across that diode, so the positive going to the positive rail and the ne negative going to the collector of the transistor as a filter to try and filter that frequency noise out. And if we look at the scope screen here at the base of the transistor, we can see that it's not a perfect square wave. It's got this sort of hump in it and then a dip, and that's probably most likely where that noise on the output in the fan is coming from. So if I now move the scope probe over to the output, as we can see it is fairly noisy and if I vary the speed the noise is still with the fan. Now, that is pretty useless. So, let's put a capacitor on the output and see what happens. Okay, I got this 100 microfarad capacitor here. And immediately, the fan, if I can get the leg to go into the board, has sped up and the noise is almost gone. However, the output on the scope is still showing that there are switching artifacts there. And if I bring it right back down to slow, I can still hear that there's noise coming from that fan. So that means the capacitor's not big enough. And I don't mean physical size, I mean capacitance. Let's try a larger capacitor. I've got a thousand microfarad here, 63 volts overkill. Oh. Well, the noise went, fan also stopped. There we go. And the noise on the scope is almost neg negligible. Put it this way, I can't hear it anymore. And the voltage on the output is going, well, from nothing to 11.3, 11.4, something around about 11.5, so almost 12 volts. So I can see that the variance of the control voltage is controlling the speed of the fan, which is sort of what we want. So now the next thing to do is play with myself, uh, no, um, is to actually build the comparator side of the circuit now and see if we can actually get the fan to operate and change speed with heat on the NTC. So I'll get to doing that now. Okay, so the op-amp comparator circuit is built now and the pot is now going at pin 3 
via a 1K resistor where it should be, which is our temperature preset pot if you like. I know there's not much space here on the desk, but I'll turn the power supply on. Well, immediately it starts pretty slow, which is probably not quite the desired operation I wanted. But if I heat the NTC with the soldering iron tip, it speeds up. Which I guess is mm, good enough operation. Now I did find the original schematic or the circuit for this on the internet. And there it just slowed back down again. And I guess his idea was he wanted the fan to be spinning at a slow speed, plus he designed it for a 5 volt fan. He wanted it to be spinning at a slow speed so it's not loud and annoying and obnoxious. And then as the, P, the NTC heats up, the fan speeds up. However, I might want to play with a few resistor values in the circuit to see if I can get that fan spinning a little bit slower. And the one change I will make is probably that 1K resistor from pin 3 might be a little bit too low of a value and driving the output transistor too hard. So I'll change that to say uh, 10K or 22K, whichever resistor I can find first. Okay, I've got a 10K in there now. I found 22K was a little bit high. So 10K seems to be fine. It's currently powered on. The fan is doing absolutely bugger all right now. And I'm measuring the voltage at pin three of the off amp. And it's pretty close to half the supply hour. Uh, it's only because of the tolerance of the 10K um, NTC. It's probably sitting probably a higher resistance than 10K. So that's why we get a little bit of a variation in voltage. What I might do is I might scope the output of pin three of the uh, triple five timer just to see what it's doing. Um, I reckon the control voltage is close to zero now. Actually according to that, no it's not. So it is oscillating. So I'll take my soldering iron and I will heat the NTC. <laughs> There it goes. I mean, I am heating it quickly. And if we look at the voltage of pin 3, we can see it's now up to 6.8. And the waveform has changed. And we're currently at about, we were at 200 hertz. Yeah, there we go. But that is, I'm, I'm heating the NTC directly with the soldering iron. Remove the soldering iron. Comes very noisy. But then the fan is now stopped and we're dropped off back to uh, about 1.3 kilohertz. So I think for what it is, that's my desired operation. And if I manipulate this pot off screen here I can make the fan start and if I wanted to I can make it start off slow and my fingers have cooled it right off which is unfortunate but So yeah, I can make it start off at a slow speed. As it heats up, the fan speeds up. As it cools down, the fan slows down. Now if that NTC was mounted directly to the heat sink of whatever it is, or close to it, even just touching it. Uh, this circuit should actually work 
quite well and keep the device cool by changing the duty cycle to the fan which will increase the speed and um, help cool it down faster so yeah so I'm going to compile the schematic up into a final drawing so we can have a look at it properly okay and here's the final schematic here and I hope you can see it okay on video because well I'm just recording the laptop screen looking at KiCad, KiCad. Now this capacitor here and this capacitor here aren't actually on the breadboard but this capacitor here would be mounted close to the any double five three four just to make sure it's not going to go into oscillation and this is just some bulk filtering for the voltage input to the circuit if uh, we're going on long supply leads back to the main power supply. It's pretty much the same as it is on the whiteboard. The only change I've made here is this 10K resistor that goes to the base of the driver transistor. And the inclusion of the overkill 1000 microfarad capacitor. But that's basically it. So it does work and it works reasonably well. I'm actually quite happy with the operation. So I'm going to leave this on the screen for a while so you can take some notes and I'll also put a link in the description to where the original article on this particular circuit came from and uh, you can look at his other implementations and ideas that he had for well in particular driving a 5 volt fan uh, however he's using a buck converter on his positive 12 volt rail here or well, it's coming from positive 24 volt uh, but I'm not sure what the output of the buck converter is, but he says it's driving a 5 uh, volt fan. Uh, this IC will run fine at 5 volts. However, he was using a TLO 81 op amp, and they don't operate any lower than plus minus 5 volts, even if you're, you know, uh, biasing pin 3 to half the supply rail. Um, it, it just will not function. So I don't know exactly what he was talking about there. And I don't know what the actual output on this line here of the buck converter is. But regardless, the circuit does work and I'm quite happy with its operation. It could be probably modified a little bit further to operate uh, even better. But um, I'll leave that up to you to experiment with. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.